Hi there and welcome back to Planescape Torment. I'm Byron. And we are still in the mortuary. Second floor. This is the fourth room we're exploring here. Done. 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 Oh, what's that? Another zombie worker. This huge corpse is standing silently in a corner of the room facing the wall. He looks to have been a heavyset man in his early years and judging by the condition of the body he died only recently. The freshly stitched number on his forehead reads 1664. This corpse looks like, it's a, like it is serving as a librarian for it is carrying a huge stack of books in its arms. Well, let's examine the books. The books appear to be old mortuary ledgers, none of them have uh, of any particular interest. As you search through the texts, however, you notice a loose page folded between two of the books. You are suddenly struck with the feeling that someone tucked it there to hide it. Take the page. The page doesn't look like it belongs with the ledgers. It looks like it belongs in a logbook. The tear is clean as if with a knife, so you suspect the page was removed on purpose. Read through it. You take a moment to read through the page. It is a list of dead bodies brought to the mortuary and locked in the receiving room. All the entries appear to be recent arrivals. Okay, let's take a look at the zombie again. This huge corpse is standing silently in a corner of the room facing the wall. He looks to have been a heavyset man in his early years. Yes, yes, yes. Now we take a look at the books again. You do another search through the text, but you find nothing more. So, how did you come to be a librarian? All the other jobs taken? The corpse stare blankly. The corpse stares blankly at the wall. We leave it in peace. So apparently in this logbook it said that um Uh, you notice that the last page has been cut out, and that apparently is the last page. This ragged page looks like it was cut neatly out of a book. It is written in a tight script. 16537, uh, fifth night, drunk, chest wound. Cause of death, mauling. Abishai, collector pox, three commons paid, no possessions. 16... Uh, 1538 5th night desiccated corpse cause of death indeterminable age of shell prevents identification collector forward 3 comments paid no possessions stripped knife marks evident from dissection 16539 5th night scarred shell cause of death indeterminable scars do not appear to be do not appear to be cause of death. Shock trauma. Collector forward. Three comments paid. Possessions locked. Five fist irons. Thirteen comments. Middle table receiving room. Sixteen thousand five hundred forty. Fifth night. Desiccated corpse number two. Cause of death indeterminable. Age of shell prevents identification. Collector forward. Three comments paid. Possessions locked. Knife marks evident from dissection, but the dissection was not thorough enough. Copper earring found lodged in abdomen. Earring has been locked in the southeast preparation room. Having initiate from the third circle examine it, it has strange markings, like those on contracted work on number 79. 16,541. Fifth night, skeleton, cause of death indeterminable. Age of shell prevents identification. Collector Faro, three comments paid, no possessions. Stripped? Knife marks evident from the section. But I'm thinking that was the 16,540. I think this was the nameless one. As with the previous entries, these shells Farad has brought also shows. Uh, these shells Farad has brought also show signs of having been prepared. I have asked that initiate the Amoric launch an investigation into the matter. Furthermore, entry 16542 is one of Farad's gang. I have seen the individual before. I would ask Amoric to pay heed to how the man died. 16542, fifth night, tiefling, male. Cause of death, slash marks, 
discoloration of wounds are consistent with grave rot. Ghoul claws. Collector of rot. Three commons paid. No possessions. Stripped. Knife marks evident from dissection. Okay, so we apparently are looking for an earring that is locked in the southeast preparation room. And we are looking for a contracted worker with the number of 79 that may have something to do with the earring. Alright. Alright, let's save. <coughs> and open the next door. The stench coming from this corpse is truly nauseating. Someone split open this man's chest and has yet to remove the internal organs. Done. There's nothing in here. I'm gone. There are a few bandages in here. Alright. Empty. 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 All that shit is empty. Who are you? Iveen. You see a slight young woman with pale features. The sunken flesh around her cheeks and neck makes her appear as if she is starving. She seems intent on dissecting the corpse in front of her, prodding the chest with a finger. Greetings. The woman does not respond. She seems too intent on the body in front of her. As you watch her work, you suddenly notice her hands. Her fingers are talons. They are darting in and out of the corpse's chest cavity like knives removing organs. Who oh, I said greetings? The woman makes no response. I think the dusty chit might be a bit short of hearing, chief. Let's lay off, shall we? What's wrong with her hands? Updated my journal. Um, she's a tiefling, chief. They got fiend blood in their veins, usually cause some ancestor of theirs shared knickers with one demon or another. Make some of them addled in the head and addled looking too. Okay, let's tap the woman to get her attention. The woman jumps and whips around to face you. Her eyes are rotting yellow with small orange dots for pupils. As she sees you, her expression changes from surprise to irritation and she frowns at you. Uh, greetings. She doesn't seem to have heard you. She leans forward, squinting, as if she can't quite make you out. Whatever is wrong with her eyes must make her terribly nearsighted. She... She clacks her tail and fingers together, then making a strange motion with her hands. Find thread and embalming juice, bring here to Ivane. Go, go, go. And we have gotten a quest. What's wrong with your hands? Updated my journal. She turns away. She makes no sign that she heard you. I think the dusty jit might be a bit short of hearing, chief. Let's lay off, shall we? Okay. Let's leave. So, it looks like we got another quest. Is that correct? Fetch embalming fluid and needle for Irene. A strange woman with tail on hands and tallow colored flesh on the second floor of Mortuary's embalming room mistook me for a zombie and asked me to fetch some embalming fluid and needle and thread for her. There must be some around the mortuary. Nothing new here. Apparently the dust woman and Balmai encountered is a tiefling, someone with fiendish blood in their veins. Apparently the fiendish blood warps their bodies in some cases, their minds as well. No, warps their bodies and in some cases their minds as well. From what Morty said, it sounds like there are a number of tieflings about, which would imply a fair number of fiends as well. Or just one fiend that was really busy. I met a dust woman and Balmai named Iveen in the mortuary. In addition to her tail and hands and tallow colored flesh, she was nearsighted and deaf and mistook me for a zombie. She ordered me to go find her a jar of embalming fluid and some needle and thread, presumably for stitching up the corpse on the table in front of her. There must be some around the mortuary somewhere, perhaps in one of the adjoining rooms. Done. I really like the journal, it is really All useful. Right. What else do we have here? There's a door, okay. All right. Hey, let's talk to you. The heavily stitched corpse is shuffling lazy back and forth between two slabs. The number 5 or 6 has been stitched on its forehead. The side of its, its neck and its arm, in fact the skin of this peeling corpse has been sewn up with so many stitches its skin looks like a bizarre street map. 
Well, let's, let's take a closer look at the stitches then. The stitches encircle the corpse running from its arms across its chest up its neck and into the damp mass of white hair. As you follow the crossroads of stitches you notice someone has jammed a needle into the corpse's forehead. The needle is attached to a thread stitching up the side of the skull. You could probably unravel it if you had something to cut the thread. Uh, let's take a look at the corpse again. Okay, then uh, cut the stitches with your scalpel, then pull out the needle and thread. You get 100 experience points. You slice the thread neatly with the scalpel, then pluck out the needle and pull the stitches out. As you do, the skin covering the forehead peels back to reveal the corpse's chalk white skull, where to your surprise the number 78 has been chiseled. Hmm, let's take a look at the corpse again. Um, although the number 5 or 6 has been stitched almost all over its body, the skin on its forehead has peeled back from the skull, reading the number 78 chiseled into the bone. Seems you got two different designations there, corpse. The corpse stares straight ahead, oblivious. We leave it in peace. Alright. The bandages covering this body are soaked with blood. Even though this corpse looks several days dead, blood is still trickles from its wounds. Uh, who are you? This corpse, 985, has stopped dead in its tracks. Judging from the condition of its left leg, it looks as if some sort of tomb rod or corpse mold has eaten through its knee. The corpse is wobbling unsteadily back and forth, trying to keep its balance. Try and help the corpse balance. You reach out for the corpse's left arm to help steady it. As you grab its arm, however, the corpse suddenly sways to the right and you end up tucking the corpse rather than steadying it. Uh, Chief, you might not... Uh. There's a crack from the corpse's left leg and the body falls like a dead tree. Its torso strikes the stone flagstones and shatters like a rotten melon, filth and ichor gurgling from the cavity. To your surprise, no one seems to have noticed the corpse's collapse. And even stranger, the left leg remains standing where the body was, as if at attention. After a moment, the leg falls over with a wet thump. As you gaze upon the putrefied remains of the corpse, you notice that its left arm seems intact. It has snapped from the torso during the fall and it doesn't appear to have been touched by the tomb blood that has spread through the rest of the body. Hmm, I wonder if I could make use of that arm. Yeah. No, we have to pick it up, I think, I guess. So we have another bandage. We have needle and thread. And we have corpse limb number 985. It's a crushing weapon. It's a club. This arm snapped clean off corpse 985 when it uh, accidentally toppled. <laughs> as much... Well, I, I tried to help. As much as the corpse's knee was rotten clean through, it looks like the combination of thick applications of a bombing fluid and Rico Mortis has made this arm almost as hard as wood. If you needed to, you could either use it to shake someone's hand from a distance or use it to bash their skulls in. We have another weapon, uh, 1d6 crushing, but speed of 4. This is faster. So, well, what else can we All destroy right. here? I'm gone. Hey, there's another... What is up with here? Another corpse on a stone slab. There's no identification what the body died of. This chalk white body has been drained of blood and treated with embalming fluid. A neatly stitched seam runs down the corpse's chest. Hey, let's talk to you. The eyes of this corpse are set close together and the eyeballs themselves are slightly askew. One faces to the left and the other to the right. You can barely make out the number 257 traced into its bruised forehead. It looks like the corpse has taken several blows to the head, making the number difficult to read. Mm, don't you get dizzy with your eyeballs facing like that? There's no flicker of understanding in the corpse's eyes. They stare silently off to the left and right. Okay, we can't Done. do nothing with you. Let's move on to this door then. I'm gone. So... What do we have Done. here? 
But there is someone here, a zombie. I'm gone. Burger. I'm gone. Nothing else. Okay, so how about we save it and talk to him? The shambling corpse gazes at you with vacant eyes. The number 821 is carved into his forehead and his lips have been stitched closed. The faint smell of formal heat emanates from the body. So, seen anything interesting going on? As you address the zombie, it blinks in surprise. Eh, hey, what? Why are you disguised as a zombie as a corpse? Updated my journal. The zombie is trying to respond behind stitched lips. He has a peculiar half frightened, half angry expression. Who are you? What you want? Um let's be sneaky and lie. Why? I was looking for you. Looking for me? Why? He squints at you. You got message for me? Yes, I have a message for you. What message? Uh, I have new orders. I'm lying a lot here. He narrows his eyes like he's trying to figure you out. Good orders. Well, I'm here to relieve you. Give me all the information you've gathered, all your possessions, and then leave. Updated my journal. Ooh, retro nicely. We gained items and 500 experience points. The zombie looks disappointed, but he shrugs and begins to fish deep in deeply into his stained tunic. Being quiet, dust is being quiet. Nothing new since last report. After a few moments, he hands you some items and grunts. Here. Yeah. Judging by the smell, they must have been hidden so as to avoid turning up if he was searched. Me leave in short while. Leave. How? The zombie nods. You want out? Go to arch on first floor. Northwest room. You need Funkorbun. Shape of crook. He holds up his index finger and bends it into a crook. When you have key, go to Arch, jump to Secret Crypt and can escape from here. Secret escape route. He nods eagerly. You can rest there. Crooked finger bow? Where am I supposed to find one of those? Updated my journal. 250 more experience points. He shrugs. Must be one around somewhere. Look in storage rooms on upper floor. Maybe there. Alright, I had some other questions though. What you want to know? Uh, where was that portal you mentioned again? Listen, remember. The zombie sounds angry. Arch, first floor, northwest room. He holds up his index finger and bends it. You need finger bow, vent. You go to secret crypt, escape route. You can rest there. Okay. Um, what are you doing here? Me spy on Dusty. Say what I see. Nothing more. What have you seen the dustmen do then? Nothing. They do nothing. Can't find nothing. Dirt, dirt. Just dead people. I see dead people. Dusties do nothing. Eyes narrow in conviction. Still I watch? I see. Uh, do you know someone named Farod? Farod? The zombie frowns briefly in thought. Uh, the zombie frowns briefly in thought. Me here, he live in hive somewhere. He shakes his head. Not nowhere. He frowns again. Dusty is very mad. They not like Farrod. Hive? Slums outside of this place. Why don't the dustman like Farrod? Updated my journal. He's a collector. Brings deaders to mortuary. Sells them to dustmen. Brings lot of deaders. Dusty is not know where he gets deaders. Thinks he's putting perks in dead book. Uh, what? He's saying this ferret Burke has been selling a lot of deaders, corpses to the dustmen. That's what collectors do. They gather, gather dead bodies and sell them to the dustmen. Sounds like this ferret has been selling so many deaders that the dustmen think he's been putting hivers in the dead book before their hours up. You know, killing people. I see. Hmm, I'm missing a journal. Have you seen it? No, no. Some Burke peel you? Uh, what? He wants to know if somebody robbed you. Probably what happened. I see. Yeah, I like how Morty translates him. <laughs> it's awesome. Can you tell me anything about doll? Scribe. Shrugs. Old. Yellow. Yeah, I was yeah, aware of that because it's pretty much obvious. 
Uh, how did you get to look like that? Me good at two guys. Me also good scars. Me wore lots of embalming fluid. Me make good zombie. The zombie giggles through stitched lips, then taps his head. Just this stupid. Yeah, you're really smart. Yeah, they're the stupid ones, all right. <laughs> and what is thinking the same lines? The sarcasm is evidently lost on the zombie who nods eagerly. Stupid dusties. Me make good zombie. Doesn't that hurt? He looks at your scars. I ask you the same question. Me, it not hurt much. Claps his chest. Me tough. Yeah, you're pretty tough. Um, this that disguise is pretty good. Can you disguise me as a zombie? He looks you up and down for a few moments, mumbling to himself, then nods. Uh huh. Mini jar of embalming fluid points at the scars on your chest. And some needle and thread. Mm, do I have that? I think I have that. Here you go. The zombie takes the items from you, then sets to work. Try to hold still. I can't believe you're going through with this. How balmy are you? Pretty balmy, I suppose. 500 more experience points. The zombie literally applies the embalming fluid to your body, then stitches up several of your scars. Working from your feet upwards, he stitches up your scars, then finishes off the disguise by stitching up your lips. Mmm, thanks. Can't you make the stitches of his lips any tighter? Stupid, Murty. The zombie holds up his head. Careful. Talk pulls stitches out. Ruin this guy's. Zombie no talk. You got to talk? Talk slow. Careful. Okay, take heed that no one expect, expects zombies to talk. If you speak to someone as a zombie, you run the, run the risk of exposing your disguise. Mm hmm I understand. Updated my journal. The zombie frowns. This disguise won't last long. Umbalming fluid dry up, stitches fall out. He shrugs. Probably not last outside mortuary. And no running. You run, you ruin whole disguise. Yeah, equipping weapons and or running will instantly nullify your zombie disguise. If you find any weapon, hold off on equipping it until you no longer wish to be disguised. If you have auto run on, be sure to switch it off if you want to maintain your disguise when you finish speaking to Vexus. Not again and leave. So now we are a zombie. And now we would have to walk very slowly. I'm gone. I will not do this. I just wanted the XP, that's it. So we got a knife. It's the same actually as the scalpel. One to three piercing damage. And more bandages. And I still have my needle and thread apparently, that's nice. But the embalming fluid is gone. We'll have to get another one. Yeah, uh, you, you could run around disguised as a zombie, but it really slows your movement down, and uh, I don't want that. That is empty. Dried blood covers the slab surface. The blood on this table is still fresh, though. A bloody cloth covers the remains of this corpse. The stench rising from the body is almost right. unbearable. Let's take a look. I'm Let's gone. See. That's empty too. Well, well, well. I'm gone. We could climb up here. This container is locked. Oh, wrong button. I wanted to hit A actually. The force did. Open. All right. Ah, this is apparently the earring that we read about. This copper earring looks ancient. Oddly enough, there doesn't seem to be a hook or any means of actually attaching it to your ear. A series of strange grooves have been carved on the inside of the earring, however, which might merit a close examination. This copper earring looks extremely old. It looks like it was meant to be warm, but there doesn't seem to be a hook or... yeah. Examine the grooves. The grooves are evenly spaced along the inside of the earring. Upon close examination, they remind you of small fangs. They are definitely man-made, but you can't figure out what they were intended for. We put the earring away. All right. We could go down here. No, it's locked. You could climb up here. Oh, more embalming fluid. All right. More embalming fluid. 
This was empty if I remember correctly. Yes. Let's return to Iveen. She was here, I think. She wanted a needle and uh, embalming fluid, if I'm not wrong. You see Iveen, she is still dissecting the corpse's chest with her talons. The rhythm of the talons reminds you of something, but you can't quite recall what. Watch her study the motions of her Updated hands. Updated my journal. As you study the motion of Iveen's hands, you feel a prickling along your scalp and then suddenly you find your vision swimming, blurring until you are standing in front of a freshly slain corpse, Rigo Mortis making a mockery of its smile, the number 42. 42? Isn't that the answer to the whole the life universe and everything? Well, the number 42 has been stitched onto its scalp. The zombie is lying on a slab and you have just finished stitching up its chest. You have placed something inside, something that may prove useful if you come this way again. Echo, keep these things safe and wait for my return. 250 more experience points. The memory of your voice is an echo, strange and hollow to your ears. You cross your arms in front of your chest and to your surprise the corpse does too. After a moment, its hands fall back to its sides, and as it does, the vision fades, until you are watching Irene's hands make their stitching motions once more. You have regained the memory. Memories can give you additional experience points, skills, or may even lead to you gaining something else of value later on. Let's tap her. And give her the threat and embalming Updated clues. Updated my journal. And 250 more experience points. Without missing a beat, Iveen snaps the thread from your hands and hooks it around one of her talons. Then begins sewing up the corpse's chest. She then takes the embalming fluid and begins to apply a layer to the corpse. We wait. Within minutes, she is finished. She clicks her talons, then turns to face you. To your surprise, she extends her hands and drags her talons along your arms and chests. Keep playing, zombie. Looks like you have a new friend, Chief. You two need some time together, or...? Keep playing, zombie. As she traces your arms and chest, you suddenly notice she seems to be examining your scars. She withdraws her talons, clicks them twice, and then bends forwards and examines some of the tattoos on your chest. Hmph, <laughs> who write on you? Have hivers do that? No respect for zombies. Zombies, not paintings. She sniffs, then pokes one of your scars. This one, bad shape, many scars, no preserves. We wait. Your tail and suddenly hook into the thread you brought her, and lightning like she jabs another tail into the skin near one of your scars. It feels barely more than a pinprick, but it looks like she's about to start stitching you up. Let her work. Updated my journal. You get an additional hit point. The sensation is curiously painless as Irene begins to stitch up your scars. When she is done, she sniffs you, frowns, and stabs her fingers into the embalming fluid. Without minutes, she has dabbled your body with the fluid, and strangely enough, it makes her feel better. Let her work. This may be the second time in my life I'm thankful I don't have a nose. Ah, Morty. Irene puts the last touches on your body, gives you another sniff, nods, then makes a shooting motion with her talons. Go. No. Done. Go. Go. We leave. And now we have 23 hit points. All awesome. Right. Um, did something ch change stats-wise? No. I thought we might have been getting an, uh, an charisma point, but we didn't get it. But hey, take a look. Uh, we are level 3 fighter. Uh, quite close to being a level 4 fighter, actually. So we were here, I think, um, and I think there was a door here. Oh, I need a key. Okay, then let's take a look at those stairs. Uh, and first take a look at the journal. Quests. Okay, we completed that quest. Uh, we still have those quests. Ah, our first quest has been completed, ain't that great? Uh, what else did we get?
One of the zombies on the second floor of the mortuary wasn't a zombie at all, but a man in disguise. Well, anyone would disguise themselves as a zombie is beyond me. I told the disguised spy that I was here to relieve him, and he handed over everything he had collected, mostly a lot of bandages and healing items, which he must have needed to maintain his disguise. Vex has told me there's a secret there's a secret portal in the northwest room of the first floor of the mortuary. If you take a crooked finger bone up to it, it will activate and take me to a secret crypt where Vex says I can rest. He doesn't know where I could find a crooked finger bone, however, but he suggests that I try the upper floor of the mortuary. It sounds like the dustman and Ferret aren't on the best of terms. Vex has told me Farrod's bringing a lot of bodies to the mortuary, and the dustman suspect that he is killing people before their hour is up. In exchange for some needle and thread and some embalming fluid, Vex has disguised me as a zombie. He warned me that running would ruin the disguise and that I shouldn't talk to others while disguised, as zombies don't talk. Watching Ivine stitch up the corpse with her tail and triggered a strange memory. Memory. I recall performing a similar operation on a corpse long ago, except that I think I was placing something inside its chest rather than taking something out. It felt like I was putting whatever it was in there so I could retrieve it later. In the memory, when I crossed my arms, the corpse itself crossed its arms and, as well, uh, it had the number 42 written on its scalp. I delivered the embalming fluid and threat to Ivy and she didn't seem terribly grateful. After I delivered the embalming fluid and thread to Ivy and she stitched up my scars and applied the embalming fluid on my body. Strangely enough, it made me feel healthier. Yeah, we got a whole hit point out of that. And in the next video we will actually walk up those stairs. But for now, let's call it quits. So I thank you very much for watching. And we'll see each other in the next one. Bye.